There is a, a, a spirit call to prayer. There is an energy that God puts into us. But then at the same time, there's a lot of things that we need to learn and develop and reach each other by teaching ourselves yeah. how to carry out and, and bring that gift into full expression. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think that, that's, that God smiles on that because it's like a father. He is our heavenly father. Uh, there's certain gifts he's given us. And I think he wants to, us to use those gifts. And some of those gifts are facilitating prayer is what we're talking about. And uh, so it's as much, you know, watching you do that. Uh, where, where does the spirit end and where do you start? It's like, well, you know, you can't, you can't find that place. It's, it's too integrated. And I think that's where God just really loves to fill us with his spirit. And lead well, you us. know, as, as I hear you, the, the other element that comes into my mind is uh, this, the gifts and how they are expressed, uh, particularly in a corporate setting, where you, what you're saying is that when we come together to pray, there are certain things that we need to bear in mind. We can't just pray as spontaneously and as... Uh, uh, kind of simple, simply as we would if we were in our own closet of prayer, we have to take into account the brethren that are, are around us. And uh, it brings to mind what uh, uh, the Apostle Paul speaks about in uh, chapter 14 of uh, 1 Corinthians, where he speaks about how to properly manifest the gifts in the context of uh, congregational gatherings. And I think it seems to be like with prayer as well. And one of the I think prayer, as you, I'm sure, would agree, and we can talk a little bit about that, uh, is an essential element for the unity of the body of Christ. It it is an expression of that unity, but it's also, I think, a a foundational element, a prerequisite for unity. But, of course, what I find is that many times when pastors, for example, come together from different denominations to pray, uh, the Charismatics and Pentecostals, which, by the way, with which I identify, We uh, bring our own energy and our own understanding of uh, prayer and spontaneity and enthusiasm and, and freedom amen of expression. To that. I love and, it. Yes. You know, the physicality of prayer. Yeah. And our more um, evangelical brethren have a different understanding of reverence and of uh, uh, order and coherence in prayer and so on. And what happens many times is that each of us, uh, you know, we feel that our model is the one that should prevail. Yeah. And so often these times are supposed to be times of unity turn actually into times of uh, alienation and separation. And part of it is because we're unmindful enough of uh, yeah. the, well, the others. Uh, back and, to uh, Scripture, Paul says, uh, prefer one another, honor one another. And I think that that, of course, that goes both ways. I've seen what you're talking about where it's really created tension, but I, uh, and I hope you've seen this as well. I'm thinking more and more there are examples where that kind of bridge is being, uh, that gap is being bridged. Mm-hmm. And I, I think, uh, you know, this is just the people that I've seen, the pastors I've worked with. I'm seeing more and more who maybe many decades ago, whether they or their denomination, would not even want to pray with someone, you know, from the opposite stream, whatever. And now it's not so much they don't believe in that. They just say, well, I, I'm not comfortable in that or I don't understand. So there's, there's a humility that's coming that I think is a Holy Spirit thing because how can the church, the capital C church, be unified if we can't even pray together? And uh, I think uh, what God wants to do these days uh, in terms of uh, revival and uh, uh, bringing power into his church and evangelistic effectiveness, without that unity, if we cannot find the way, uh, there are things that we will be hindering, I think, the Holy Spirit from doing. I think God wants to do some powerful transformative things in our culture today. Yes. But unless we find the way to come together and to be mindful of each other and to learn the art of corporate prayer, uh, it's going to be much more difficult for that uh, revival, that renewal to take place in the church. Yeah, actually, the, our, our lack of unity at that level, just because we're in the same room doesn't mean we're unified, but I think the lack of unity at the level you're referring to is a hindrance of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I remember uh, Francis Frangipan uh, talking once about, uh, well, actually I've heard him a couple times say it, you know, identifying who, what, what the name of the demon was that was, you know, uh, or the spirit that was keeping the, the uh, work of the revival away. And he basically said, it's God because God uh, resists the proud and, and he works with the humble. And his point was that so often if we are proud in our streams and in our churches to the extent that we don't humbly seek unity, whatever sacrifice it might mean on my part to you or your part to me, uh, how can God work? So a lot of times we're, we're maybe blaming external forces, and those are real, and they're there, 
but we have to first look here and here. Yeah. Well, um, as I read a couple of articles that you have written in the past, uh, and um, one of the things that uh, becomes clear to me is that you, what you understand as prayer is more than just a mechanical utterance or just a punching of a clock yeah. and saying, okay, we've, we've done this uh, before an activity and uh, we have uh, sort of put holy water on it at the end <laughs> of it by uttering a perfunctory prayer and so we've done our duty. Yeah. But for you, it seems that prayer is so much more uh, penetrating. It, it has to be so much more than that. Uh, how, how do you define true, authentic, biblical, anointed prayer? Well, the verse that pops in my mind is where Paul tells us pray without ceasing. And we know that that can't mean you never sleep, you never eat, you know, of course. I think what he's saying is uh, make prayer your life. I think of prayer as, uh, as breath. It's the breathing out of our needs and breathing in of God's response to us. It's... Uh, you know, the first prayer was uh, probably when, uh, you know, God spoke to Adam. God walked in the garden with Adam. I think that's the, the metaphor. I mean, that was literal, but he wants that to be our metaphor. There's times to kneel and pray. There's times to, you know, fold our hands and close our eyes. But what we do in between those times need to be as much, as, needs to be as much prayer as what we do when we're in so-called prayer posture. And I think the more we see that prayer is our ongoing life with Christ, I think that the more uh, prayer will become, uh, I don't want to say, supernaturally natural to us. Mm -hmm. Pray Magazine, they're no longer being, it's no longer being printed, but when they, they were, they had uh, the, their motto under it, uh, uh, trying to promote a passion for prayer is what they almost went into. And then someone says, wait a minute, we need to change that. And they just changed it very little, promoting a passion for Christ through prayer. So prayer has to be the means to an end. And the end is not a thing that I pray for. Dear Lord, give me this, please. Prayer is the means to an end. And the end is that this helps me in my relationship with Christ. Well, when you, uh, it, it's so easy for us to turn uh, the scriptures into things that are mechanical. And um, for example, Jesus says, uh, whatever you pray in my name. So of course, we are very sure that as we end our prayers, we pray in the name of Christ, where, uh, you know, perhaps what Jesus meant was much more I agree. than just a, a mechanical verbal utterance of his name. It, it meant what you pray in my authority. That's right. What you pray in submission to me, what you pray in inner acknowledgement of my lordship and my power, the power behind my person and my name. And as you pray in that conviction, uh, then... Yeah. That, that uh, inner energy that you are generating through those uh, acquiescences, if you will, yes. that will have the power and to if, energize what you're And pronouncing. if your prayer isn't prayed from that place, adding in the name of Jesus at the end, it's not a rabbit's foot. I mean, it, you, you know, it doesn't magically, oh, now it's suddenly a, a you know, spirit-filled prayer. Although we're not saying that you don't do that either. I mean, it, it's exactly. perfectly fine. To I totally it. agree with that. Um, in fact, there's a book written, I wish I could remember the author's name, but uh, it's a professor who wrote Praying Backwards. And what he means, of course, is not turning around physically backwards. But he says, why don't you start with in the name of Jesus Christ? Not that he needs to hear it, but that I need to remember. Wait a minute. The only reason I can talk to God is because of what Christ has done. The reason that I can enter the throne room, Ephesians 2, 6 says, I think this is a verse that so many of us have just, we believe it, but we've glossed over where it says that we are seated in the heavenlies with Christ. What would happen if our prayer meetings, we started there and said, let's do this, not just in the name of Christ, but in the proximity of Christ, because we have position, not physically, but we have, pos we have it's kind of like an all access pass to, uh, you know, your favorite uh, musician's uh, concert. I mean, you get the run of the place and God says, Pray from up here. And I think that would radically change our lives if we understood that. Well, you know, one of my problems personally, I'll be confessional for a moment here. Um, as I pray more and as I become absolutely possessed by the understanding of the importance of prayer, my prayer life has become more problematic uh, because I, I tend to see prayer in everything that I do. And I tend to be involved in prayer as I drive my car, yes. as I uh, uh, walk, uh, as I'm in my office alone in a moment yes. between two meetings uh, as I think about all the different projects that I'm involved, I am obligated continually yes. to bring these things before the Lord. And they may be 30-second uh, prayers, right. but I mean, my whole day 
And so it, it sometimes make it hard, makes it hard for me to um, just uh, feel, well, you know, that time that I spent, uh, or, or sometimes I feel I'm ch- shortchanging the Lord because I may not be spending more time in that moment that is supposedly designated yes, for right. prayer. But right. uh, the mo- when I think of what uh, the Apostle Paul says about praying without ceasing, yes. um, uh, and to you know, be in prayer always, uh, I, I, I see that uh, as uh, prayer disperses itself more and more through our life, it really stops being that moment, that devotional moment only, or even primarily perhaps. And it's something that then suffuses every moment of your life.